today on this very special episode of me. I'm going to be reviewing the Radio Diddy, Ray, Ray, dot, Rayodity, Radi, Rayodity, DB20G, GMRS Mobile Radio. This is a GMRS FCC Part 95 E approved radio. Costs $129. Affiliate links below. And it is shipping now. I'm going to go over what's in the box when you buy it. This is not an unboxing. Unboxings are stupid. But I will debox the contents of what is inside the box. As with all my videos, I will keep this short and to the point because I know your time as a YouTube viewer is very valuable. I do not waste your time like so many other YouTubers do with a stupid intro and graphics and music and begging you to hit the subscribe button or click the join button. I would never waste your time like that, like they all do, because you are my favorite viewer and I know that your time is very, very valuable. Or at least that's what you tell people. When you purchase the DB20G, you will receive a manual. Actually, it's not really a manual. It's more of a pamphlet pamphlet with 11 pages. We're going to talk more about this. Oh, and uh, I almost forgot to mention my friends at Radiodity, 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 Radiodity. My friends at Radiodity did send me this. They asked me to review it and let you know what I think of it. And when I'm done, I get to keep it. So the first thing that you will notice, the first thing that I noticed, is that the radio is very small. It's much smaller than I thought. Measures in at about five inches and at the widest point by four inches by about one and a half inches. It's a very small radio, which is a good thing, especially if you plan on mounting it in a vehicle like a Jeep where there's no room anywhere. So in this case, smaller is better. The second thing that I noticed when opening the box with my new DB20G is that it has a cigarette lighter connector for power. Now this is actually good because a lot of people want a quick, simple way to install a radio. Maybe they don't want to drill holes in their uh, vehicle and make it permanent. So this makes it very easy to just plug it in. Of course, you'll need to plug an antenna into it as well, but this makes it very easy to just plug it in and use it. If you want a permanent installation, you just get your wire cutters and snip that off and then install it permanently. So that's very helpful. This is the first mobile radio that I've reviewed that has a cigarette lighter connection. You will also receive a microphone. You will receive a mounting bracket for mounting the radio. You'll receive a bag full of screws and nuts and bolts, a fuse, and a microphone holder. And you will receive the USB programming cable. Most manufacturers, many, not all, but most of them make you pay extra if you want to be able to actually program your radio with a computer. Radio Didi, Radio Didi includes it. It's a good deal. So let's take a quick look around the DB20G. The FCC ID is prominently located right on top. They don't hide it like certain other manufacturers do. You've got your microphone input plug. That's also where you uh, plug in the programming cable. You've got a VFO slash memory button, main button, which switches between channel A and B. This radio monitors two frequencies at once, so you switch between the two that way. Monitor button uh, turns off the squelch and allows you just to listen to the static. Channel up and channel down. Now here's another feature that no other radio has. This is a first in the GMRS radio industry. This radio has a fun button. Fun. No other radio has a fun button. I think most other manufacturers would call that a menu button. Rayodity takes it one step further. Fun. Fun button. On the bottom, you've got the speaker, and this speaker is actually very loud. I was impressed with the amount of noise that this thing is able to produce. 
uh, mounting screws for those uh, for mounting it into the bracket on the sides. On the back, you've got your regular SO239 or PL259 type connector for regular coax. And there is an external speaker button for plugging in. If this isn't loud enough, you can plug in your own speaker. And of course, the aforementioned cigarette lighter plug. Now I do have my notes today because I don't remember everything. I don't pretend to remember everything. I'm just a regular human boy, just like the rest of you. I forget stuff. I forget more things than I remember. So if you see me looking away, it's because I don't want to miss anything. And I want to make sure you, the viewer, are fully informed. So let me answer some of the common questions that everybody asks on almost every radio review I do. Get those out of the way. Yes, it does support split tones. I'm going to connect to a repeater in a minute, and that repeater does use split tones. Roger Beep. There's a lot of discussion, a lot of opinions on Roger Beeps. Some people don't like the Roger Beep. Other people do like the Roger Beep. I always say, my radio, my choice. If I want to turn on my Roger Beep, I'll turn it on. If you don't want to listen to it, don't whine about it like a baby. Just go listen to something else. Nobody is forcing you to listen to me talk on my radio with my Roger Beep. People complaining about the Roger Beep do not own the airwaves, although many people seem to think that they do. If they don't like it, they can go listen to something else. But this radio does not support a Roger Beep, so it's not an issue. The manual. I mentioned I would talk about this manual. That's it. That's the manual. It is written in Chinglish, good Chinglish, mostly English. It is understandable, though, so that's not really my gripe. My gripe is that it does not include, it, it includes everything you need to know to plug it in, turn it on, and start talking. It's a little light on the details. Uh, as, as I go through the radio, I'll get to more of those. This thing sucks. Again, it's fine for getting you up and running and just using the radio and talking, but... All right, so let's turn this thing on. I have a Jackery 1000 solar generator, which is basically a big battery. So I'm gonna plug that in. And that's gonna give me power. So let's turn it on. It has, the, to turn it on, you turn the knob. I guess most radios, you push the button, this one you turn the knob, and then that is the volume. It's got a nice little power up tone. So on the screen, you've got your a, B indicator, which switches you by using the main button between your A and your B channel. You've got your channel number indicator, and you can specify in the menu if you want to display the frequency or the channel name or just the channel number. You've got your voltage in. Uh, plus DT means that this is a, a uh, repeater channel, and it's using a uh, DCS tone. Little H there indicates high power. You've got a receive meter there. This is all for your channel A, and then it also shows you your channel B. So this radio does the dual monitoring. You can listen to two channels at the same time, which a lot of the radios do these days, and I don't know why, because I hate that feature. Whenever I use that feature, I end up talking to the wrong person. I think I'm listening to them on channel B, and I start talking to them, and I'm transmitting on channel A. It's just a pain. It's too confusing for me. I'm, I require more simple things. It's easy to turn that off. So you've got your B channel here, which it's also listening to, and it's got a little meter there to show the strength on the whatever you're receiving on channel B. And then it's got this main A, I think it's showing the squelch level. I don't really know why, and of course there's nothing in the manual about that. So I can switch between my A and my B with uh, hitting the main button. I can press the monitor button to basically turn off the squelch and listen to any low signals or static. That thing is loud. That speaker's really loud. That's, uh, that's a good speaker. Channel up and down. And of course, the fun button to run through the uh, menu and menu options. Now, once you're in the menu, you don't use the up and down to scroll through the menu items as one would think. You use the VM, the uh, VFO memory slash button and the main button to scroll up and down. So if I want to change the squelch, for example, I scroll up, find the squelch option, and use the up and down button to actually change it. And then I hit the function to save it. I think you can also hit the monitor button. Now, one thing that I found that I did not like about this, it's not a big deal, but it's kind of a pain, 
is that every channel by default is set to narrow band. So I've already changed this one to uh, wide band. But if I change channels, little N there indicates narrow band. And you can see that pretty much all of them are on narrow, except for the ones that I went in and changed. It's very simple to change it. Uh, you hit your fun button and go up and down till you get to the uh, option number seven, wide or narrow, change it to wide, and hit fun again. So what that means is if you're transmitting on narrow band, it basically lowers your transmit volume. Technically it's different, but the end result is when you're talking to people, they're gonna keep saying, I can't hear you yell louder into your microphone, and no matter how loud you yell, they're gonna have trouble hearing you. It's gonna cut your volume in half. Not a big deal but I don't know why they would default them all to narrow band when now I've got to go in and change everyone to wide band. It's kind of a pain. Now you can use this as a scanner. It can store a total of 500 channels. This is one that they call a 500 channel GMRS radio. What that means is you can talk on your 22 GMRS channels. It's got eight additional repeater channels. It also has nine additional repeater channels that allow you to set a set of second repeaters with different CTCSS tones or DCS tones. So what that means is, first of all, most radios don't do this. Very few radios allow you to do this, so this is a great feature. Let's say when you're at home, you talk on repeater channel number one, and you've got a set of uh, CTCSS tones that you use to connect to that repeater. Then when you go off-roading 100 miles away, there's another repeater that you want to use also on channel one, but with different tones. Most repeaters have different tones. So on most radios, if you wanted to use that same repeater that's far away with different tones, you would have to go in and change the programming to change that tone. That can be a pain, especially when you're driving or off-roading or adventuring. This repeater allows you to store a second repeater channel one with a different tone tone, which is great. So you've got your 22 channels for GMRS, you've got your eight repeater channels, your nine more repeater channels, which has different tones, and then you've got 400 and whatever the difference is, up to 500 channels that you can store for receiving only to scan through. So you can use it as a scanner, you can just have it scan through all the frequencies, or you can save channels, save frequencies into channels and scan through those as a scanner. And it's also got the 11 NOAA channels in there. The nine, what uh, Radiodity, Radiodity calls DIY channels, and the 11 NOAA channels. Of course, those were the first things I wanted to set up. No mention of them in here. The only way I even knew about them was by reading the Amazon page, affiliate link below, that mentioned what channel numbers they are and uh, how to use them. It doesn't say fully how to use them, it says what channel numbers they are so I could access them. A little detail like that would have been nice to be in the manual. The screen is uh, small, right about two inches, but it is very bright. You can adjust the brightness in the menu to turn it up or down, and it has, it probably isn't gonna show on the uh, camera, but it does have a fairly good angle of view and it doesn't totally wash out in bright sunlight. The radio is not supported in Chirp yet. That's not an issue with the radio. That's the Chirp guys just have to uh, update their software. So uh, in order to program it with the computer, you need to download the Radiodity software. I didn't bother because I always recommend that you know how to program your radio by hand because when you're out in the middle of the desert and for some reason you need to change the programming, if you rely on that computer that's sitting at home, you're going to be SOL. So I didn't bother, but you can download the software. Now the advertisements say that this is a 20 watt GMRS radio. But when I look in the specs, the specs say on the low power channels, it's five watts. And on the high power channels, it is 18 watts. Now, why would they sell this as a 20 watt radio when it doesn't even try to put out 20 watts? It says, and it says this on the Amazon page too that it's 18 watts in the specs on the Amazon page. So let's see though what it actually outputs. So I'm gonna plug in my microphone. More on the microphone, let's talk about the microphone for a second before I get to that. You can do most of the programming from the microphone, but you still need to touch these other buttons to program it. So you can't use the microphone to, 
to do everything like you can with some other radios. I, if you, no matter what, you still need to be in arm's reach, hand's reach of the radio. Uh, the microphone is a bit light and plasticky. Actually, let's go over what it has here. So you've got your push to talk button. Uh, your buttons here for uh, program, programming in frequencies and shortcuts for menus and such and whatnot. Uh, the little hole to yell into is right there. And you've got a channel up and down button. It is a little lightweight and plasticky. Feels a little bit like a toy. It's not bad. It's just, you know, this is a $100, $120 radio. It's not a $300 radio. So, But you do get that USB programming cable. This is not what you think it is. I know you, you think you knew what this is. This is not a giant butt plug. This is my new 50 watt dummy load. The uh, I've been using this meter. This is my handy dandy little uh, SWR and power meter. And it came with a dummy load, but it's just a tiny little, little baby dummy load, only good for five watts. So now that I play with the big boys, I need the so we're going to hook up the uh, dummy load here. Hopefully I can get it all on camera and I don't know how well this is going to show up. I'm going to do my best. It is set to low power, which should be according to that useless manual, uh, five Watts. So let's see what we get. Four Watts should be five, four Watts. Not bad. You will never see a difference between four watts and five watts. Let's go to a high power channel. And this is, I set on wideband as well. So let's see what we get. Fifteen, 15 watts, basically. So the box says 20 watts. The spec says 18 watts. The meter says 15 watts. Now the difference between 20 watts and 18, what it says on the box and what the spec says it should do is not that much. The difference between the box, 20 watts, and what it's actually doing, 15 watts. That's not gonna make a huge difference when you transmit, but it's not 20 watts. Now as far as range, I drove it around in the Jeep last night in uh, with my BR two, uh, BR450 antenna affiliate link below which i have mounted on the jeep and the range was just like you know any of my other radios so range you know this 15 watt radio is not going to talk any further or any less than some other 15 watt radio the range is great that's great that's great uh, that you're uh, pursuing uh, the hobby and, and sharing it with even though i don't have an antenna hooked up it's still receiving signal through my dummy load and the wires here If you watch my channel, you know that I have a repeater that I set up. Uh, so the antenna is just about 60, 75 feet outside on the roof. Uh, so we should be able to talk through that repeater, get somebody on the other end to uh, see how it sounds at the other end, and then uh, get a stronger signal so you can see how the radio sounds. Three, five, six. Do you copy? We're testing the radio radiodity DB20G. I'm talking through my dummy load through the repeater. Let me know how it sounds at your end. How do we sound over there? You are loud and clear. Modulation is good too. Copy that. Give me a five count just so we can see how you sound here. Three, five, six. Uh, testing. Uh uh, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. So as a radio, it's a good radio. I think the best feature is the ability to have more than one repeater channel set up with different tones. That's just something that you can't do on a lot of radios, especially the less expensive radios. The uh, chassis is good, solid. It looks like it's mostly heat sink. This is a good little radio for $129. You know, this is a great starter radio. Now, as I mentioned, this thing is a piece of junk. It's enough to get you up and running, don't get me wrong. But I think the biggest drawback is the manual, which really is no big deal because it's very easy for radiodity, radiodity, radiodity. It's very easy for radiodity, radiodity. 
to update the manual and put a, uh, a new file on their website for you to download. So that's a very simple thing for them to do. I'm sure they're already working on revision two. If they're not, they will be after they watch this video. One other issue that I did find, almost forgot. Good thing I have my notes. If in the menu settings, if you have menu option number 29 set to display the channel uh, on the sub channel. So what that means is if I have it set to show the channel down here instead of the frequency, I cannot switch into VFO mode. You hear that? That's the screw you tone. So to get in or out of VFO mode, I've got to hit my fun button and change that to anything else. Now I can switch between VFO and channel. It took me an hour of screaming and yelling and pulling out my hair to figure that out. So that's just a little, I don't know if that's a bug or a feature. I'm not sure why it would do that. It is very frustrating, but once you figure it out, it's no big deal. So minor little issue, probably fixable through an update, probably won't affect most people. Just a minor little thing. There's a few things in the manual, the manual that I hate that's not a manual, it's a pamphlet. It refers to things as if we're all experts. First of all, it, it nowhere does it say that you need a GMRS license to use this radio. By the way, you need a GMRS license to use this radio. Every other radio I've ever bought or reviewed or looked at always says right on page one, you need a FCC GMRS license to use this radio. I thought that was the law. Maybe not, I don't know. Leave a comment, let me know. And it makes references to a few things that I don't even know what they are and I've been, I've dealt with a lot of GMRS radios. Tone deck, optional signaling, off, DTM off, DTMF, two tone, five tone. I, there, there's no explanation of what that's for or why I would use it. RP lock, busy channel lock. So we know what busy channel lock is on most radios. That means it won't let you transmit if somebody else is already transmitting. So I understand what off means. I understand what busy means. I don't understand what repeater means and there's no explanation. TX inhibit, no idea what that is. No information on the noise reduction. Five tone, two tone. Let me show you what that does. That's an interesting one because I have no idea why I would want to do that. So if I hit my fun button and I go to, it said uh, menu item 17, and I press the mic button, it makes a fun little tone. I go to menu 18, makes it, it makes a different tone. Don't know why I'd want to do that or when, because this doesn't tell me. So there's several things in here that it mentions, but it doesn't elaborate on them. So should you buy the DB20G? It is a good starter radio. Transmits fine, works well, nice screen, easy to see, great speaker. All the features that any other GMRS radio has, plus a few more. Those uh, That second set of uh, repeater channels is great. Super easy to install. That alone will make the difference for a lot of people. A lot of people ask when I review radios, can I plug it into the cigarette lighter? And most times... Uh, the higher power radios, you can't because uh, the cigarette lighter won't supply enough power. This one isn't that so high that you can't do that. And it comes with the lighter plug. Of course, if you don't want to use it, just clip it off. So super easy to install. You don't even have to install it permanently. And it does all the things it's supposed to do very well. It's not perfect, but for 129 bucks, you're not going to get perfection. The biggest issue, really the only real issue that I have, I don't like that they... Say when you buy it that it's 20 watts and then in the specs they say, well, it's really only 18 watts. And then of course it's only putting out 15 watts on the meter. I don't like that, but it's still, you know, it's close enough. The documentation sucks. So overall, a good radio worth the price. Yes. If you're an advanced GMRS user and you're looking for something with less spurious RF output, this radio is probably not for you. If you even know what that is, this radio isn't for you. But if you're looking for your first GMRS radio, not sure if you want to drill holes in your vehicle and run wires to get elec uh, the electricity, then this radio, probably a good choice. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. I will do my best to answer them. If I'm not able to, somebody else will come along and try. They'll probably get it wrong. So bear that in mind. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you on the